Hello, thank you so much for joining me today. Linda Lamp here, and we're going to continue the reading of A Course in Miracles, the main text. Today, we're going to start chapter 24, and I think we'll read the introduction. And then, uh, oh, chapter 24 is the goal of specialness. We'll read the introduction and we'll read section two, which is specialness as a substitute for love. Chapter 24, introduction. Forget not that the motivation for this course is the attainment and the keeping of the state of peace. Given this state, the mind is quiet and the condition in which God is remembered is attained. It is not necessary to tell him what to do. He will not fail. Where he can enter, there he already is, or there he is already. And it can be he, and, and can it be, he cannot enter where he wills to be. Peace will be yours because it is his will. Can you believe a shadow can hold back the will that holds the universe secure? God does not wait upon illusions to let him be himself, no more his son. They are. And what illusion that idly seems to drift between them has the power to defeat what is their will. To learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure, but it will jeopardize your learning. No belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate each decision you make. For a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. It is the outcome of belief and follows it as surely as does suffering follow guilt and freedom sinlessness. There is no substitute for peace. What God creates has no alternative. The truth arises from what he knows and your decisions come from your beliefs as certainly as all creation rose in his mind because of what he knows. Chapter 24, Section 2, The Goal of Specialness. Section 2, Specialness as a Substitute for Love. Love is extension. To withhold the smallest gift is not to know love's purpose. Love offers everything forever. Hold back but one belief, one offering, and love is gone because you asked a substitute to take its place. And now must war, the substitute for peace, come with one alternative that you can choose for love. Your choosing it has given it all the reality it seems to have. Beliefs will never openly attack each other because conflicting outcomes are impossible. But an unrecognized belief is a decision to war in secret where the results of conflict are kept unknown and never brought to reason to be considered sensible or not. And many senseless outcomes have been reached and meaningless decisions have been made and kept hidden to become beliefs now given power to direct all subsequent decisions. Mistake you not the power of these hidden warriors to disrupt your peace. For it is that at their mercy while you decide to leave it there. The secret enemies of peace your least decision to choose attack instead of love, unrecognized and swift to challenge you to combat and to violence far more inclusive than you think are there by your election. All right, let's read that again, because that was kind of a, you know me in the language, the way this was written. It's a little uh, cumbersome at times, to say the least. Mistake you not the power of these hidden warriors to disrupt your peace. 
for it is at their mercy while you decide to leave it there. The secret enemies of peace, your least decision to choose attack instead of love, unrecognized and swift to challenge you to combat, to combat and to violence far more inclusive than you think are there by your election. Do not deny their presence nor their terrible results. All can be denied. All that can be denied is their reality, but not their outcome. So let me just pause a second and, and say that we're talking about beliefs here, right? What you believe is the result or how you, let me put it this way, how you think and act are a result of your beliefs. And so when it says an unrecognized belief is a decision to war in secret, where the results are of conflict are kept unknown and never brought to reason to be considered sensible or not. So when you have these beliefs and you're acting on them, many senseless outcomes have been reached and meaningless decisions have been made and kept hidden to become beliefs now given power to direct all subsequent decisions. This is why what you believe is so important because you're acting on those beliefs. And if you believe in separation, if you don't believe in love, if you don't believe in oneness, if you believe in all these things that are contrary to the core teachings of the Course of Miracles, which is that God is love and love is what all there is, then your life is being, you're, you're, you're acting out your life based on your beliefs that are incongruent with the ultimately, ultimate reality of the universe. So the secret enemies of peace, your least decision to choose attack instead of war, unrecognized and swift to challenge you to combat and to violence, far more inclusive than you think are there by your election. Do not deny their presence nor their, uh, their terrible results. All that can be denied is, be denied is their reality, but not their outcome, right? So the things, what they're saying is, the things you're basing your beliefs on aren't true. But the things you're basing your actions are on have outcomes. And the outcomes are real. Whether what you whether what you created them through was based on something real or not, the outcomes are still real. All that is ever cherished as a hidden belief to be defeat, defended through unrecognized, oh, sorry, though unrecognized, is faith in specialness. Let's read that again. All that is ever cherished as a hidden belief to be defended though unrecognized is faith in specialness. This takes many forms, but always clashes with the reality of God's creation and with the grandeur that he gave his son. What else could justify attack? For who could hate someone whose self is his and whom he knows? Only the special could have enemies, for they are different and not the same. And difference of any kind imposes orders of reality and a need to judge that cannot be escaped. What God created cannot be attacked, for there is nothing in the universe unlike itself. But what is different calls for judgment, and this must come from someone better, someone incapable of being, like what he condemns, above it, sinless by comparison with it. And thus does specialness become a means and end at once. For specialness not only sets apart, but serves as a grounds from which attack on those whom seem 
beneath the special one is both natural and just. The special ones feel weak and frail because of differences for what could make them special is their enemy. Yet they protect its enmity and call it friend. On its behalf, they fight against the universe for nothing in the world they value more. Specialness is the great dictator of wrong decisions. Here is the grand illusion of what you are and what your brother is. And here is what must make the body dear and worth preserving. Specialness must be defended. Illusions can attack it, and they do. For what your brother must become to keep your specialness is an illusion. He who is worse than you must be attacked so that your specialness can live in his defeat. For specialness is triumph and its victory in his defeat and shame. How can he live with all your sins upon him? And who must be his conqueror but you? Would it be possible for you to hate your brother if you were like him? Could you attack him if you realized your journey with him to a goal that is the same? Or it, could you attack him if you realized your journey with him to a goal that is the same? You journey with him. You, <laughs> again, I'd love to run this whole book through Grammarly and see what we came up with. Could you attack him if you realized you journey with him to a goal that is the same? Would you not help him reach it in every way you could if his attainment of it were perceived as yours? You are his enemy in specialness, his friend in a shared purpose. Specialness can never share, for it depends on goals that you alone can reach. And he must never reach them, or your goal is jeopardized. Can love have meaning where the goal is triumph? And what decision can be made for this that will, that will not hurt you? Your brother is your friend because his father created him like you. There is no difference. You have been given to your brother that love might be extended, not cut off from him. What you keep is lost to you. God gave you and your brother himself, and to remember this is now the only purpose that you share. And so it is the only one you have. Could you attack your brother if you chose to see no specialness of any kind between you and him? Look fairly at whatever makes you give your brother only partial welcome, or would let you think that you are better off apart. Is it not always your belief that your specialness is limited by your relationship? And is not this the enemy that makes you and your brother allusions to each other? The fear of God and of your brother comes from each unrecognized belief in specialness. For you demand your brother bow to it against his will, and God himself must honor it or suffer vengeance. Every twinge of malice or stab of hate or wish to separate arises here. For here the purpose that you and your brother share becomes obscured from both of you. You would oppose this course because it teaches you, you and your brother are alike. You have no purpose that is not the same and none your father does not share with you. For your relationship has been made clean of special goals. And would you now defeat the goal of holiness that heaven gave it? What perspective can the special have that does not change with every seeming blow, each slight or fancy judgment on itself? Those who are special must defend illusions against the truth. For what is specialness but an attack upon the will of God? You love your brother not while it is 
This you would defend against him. This is what he attacks and you protect. Here is the battleground which you wage against him. Here must be your enemy and not your friend. Can never there be peace among the difference, the different. He is your friend because you are the same. Okay, this is extremely powerful teaching, if convoluted. So the point here is that no one is more special than anyone else. And I, I like this chapter for a very specific reason. I like it because one of the things that's happened in the past few years, specifically the last year and a half or so, is that there are a lot of spiritual people who have adopted uh, the QAnon platform and they are using their spirituality to put that platform forward. And that platform, it's all about specialness. That platform is all about separation, division. Some people are better than others. It's a perfect example of what this chapter is talking about or section of this chapter. And we're going to go on the rest of this chapter, I'm sure, based on the uh, titles of the next pieces or sections. Um, you know, the treachery of specialness is section three, the forgiveness of specialness is section four, and five is specialness versus sinlessness. This is going to be a powerful reading. Uh, the, these sections will be powerful readings, as this one was today. When you see yourself as special, you see yourself as different. And when you see yourself as different, you are uh, in the weeds. You're, you've abandoned all spiritual teaching because we are one. We are one. We are a fabric. We are a fabric of the same thing, individuated into expressions that appear different, but still are made from the same fabric. Everything that we see in this 3D realm is a true illusion. If there's anything special, and that's what's special, it is, is that this stuff can take a form and sit here and be a chair that I'm sitting in, and yet it's moving. And yet, when I come in the next day, this chair will not have moved from where it is now. It'll be in the same spot. It'll look exactly the same. And yet, the entire time I've been, I will have been gone, it will be moving. Everything in it is moving. And it's also more space than matter. And yet, it holds together in this realm. That's what's special. What's special is how we're living. But individually, individually, there is nothing that makes any one of us better or more holy or more special than anyone else. We can have differences. We can be different. We are all very different. And some people have talents that other people don't. And some people mistakenly think that that makes them special, better, better than others. But there is no betterment here between each other. No one is ever better than another. We might be better at things than each other. But the key here is the key. The key is love. The key is love. And if you are being a being of love, you will not feel special, more special than someone else. 
it will not be in your wheelhouse. You will not have that experience. Because if you are love in form, there's no judgment. And the notion, the whole idea of specialness is one of judgment and ego. So I hope that uh, wraps up this section, these sections, two sections for you today. Uh, we'll pick up with our next reading. Section three, the treachery of specialness. That'll be coming up next Sunday. And until then, thank you so much for joining me. If you would like to have a discussion about this or need support with this material, you can text me at 907-351-3003. You can also uh, message me through my websites, lindalamp.shop and lindalamp.com. Until next week, much love and namaste.